Okay, guys, I was terrible at time management. Like, terrible. Like, the worst. I was late all the time. I never hit a deadline. Um, oh my gosh, like, I was just a mess. Hot mess. <laughs> Hot mess when I was younger. So, if I can learn how to manage my time well, you can too. <laughs> you can do it. It's not too hard. Well, it's hard. It's hard. It takes a lot of discipline. But I'm going to share with you my three favorite time management hacks for your homeschool days. Hey, hey, friends. Welcome to Joyful Noise Learning. I am Ashley and I'm a homeschool mom to three wonderful kiddos. They're age 10, 8, and six currently they always have birthdays that always happens but they're six he's six now <laughs> okay and here on my channel i love to share affordable homeschooling tips all under the umbrella of charlotte mason inspired homeschool so i'm so glad you're here and i know i always say that but it's true i said it in all of the other videos so take a minute subscribe if you haven't yet i love bringing these tips to you and i love seeing you guys and chatting with you down in the comments Today is a great video. It was inspired by and hosted by my great friend, Wendy, over at Plan, Prep, Pray. Wendy is the creator of the Peaceful Planner and the Busy Bee Planner for Kids. She's also launching her Peaceful Presence course today. You wanna to go check that out, all about time management and homemaking. And I know she will be huge help to you. So go to Wendy at Plan, Prep, Pray and check out all the wonderful things she's made. We're so excited all to bring you our favorite, time management, time saving, homeschool hacks. There's gonna be an entire playlist with a bunch of us sharing our best management, time management hacks, and you're gonna to wanna to check that playlist out. If you're here from one of the other channels, welcome, let's be friends, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. As I was saying earlier in my intro, I, as a young child and even a young adult, was terrible at time management like the worst. I would forget things, I would forget appointments. Did you ever like write things on your hand so you could remember them? Yeah, I would write things on my hand, but then I wouldn't really remember them. I get easily distracted, get lazy, <laughs> like where I just don't wanna do anything, don't feel disciplined. Or sometimes I, in the past, have been like super strong, like yeah, 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 go, 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 we're gonna do this, we're gonna get it done, we're gonna get it done. And then I get burnt out because I just push, 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 push. And then I get tired after all that pushing and I, and I burn out and then I don't wanna do anything. I was getting really tired of these ebbs and flows in my energy, um, both just in life and in homeschooling. And when I became a stay-at-home mom and started having kids, I realized something had to change. I have to get my act together. I've got to manage my time and not let my time manage me. That was like one of the biggest things was when I realized that I could tell my time where to go or what I do with my time. And I realized that, holy cow, my whole life changed and it's been great. It hasn't been perfect, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect at all, but I've grown so much in this area and I love talking about this stuff. So when it comes to homeschooling, homeschooling has really challenged me to tell my time where to go. And there are three things I wanna share with you that I think will help you when you are trying to manage your time and save time when you're homeschooling. Okay, number one, oh, my foot itches, hold on, got it. All right, number one is to plan for one chunk of time at a time. So some people call these terms, some people call them quarters, or some people call them seasons or sprints is what they're called. My husband is in the software engineering industry and they call it a sprint. So what you do is you don't plan for the entire year. You don't plan every single day for entire school year because you're bound to not follow that plan, like ever. <laughs> so you don't wanna plan that long out. You wanna shorten that time out. You wanna look at like where you wanna be eventually, but you wanna shorten that just a little bit. And I go at about four to six weeks, maybe nine weeks at a time. I know some people do quarters and do 12 weeks. That's a lot for me. That's a little bit too much for my little brain. So I do six to nine weeks and then I can focus on that. And then when that's over, whew, we get a break and then and then we plan again, and then I can look at the next six to nine weeks and then look at that. So I know sometimes our curriculum has it kind of all planned out already, but sometimes you're piecing together a few things, you know, and you wanna add, you know, some music in here, or you wanna add some art in there. So that's what I'm talking about, is looking at your plan for, 
for everything as a whole and only planning for small chunks at a time at once. This has helped me tremendously where I'm not feeling super overwhelmed because what happens is if I look at the whole year and try to plan for everything, you know, things change, you know, our kids grow and change and, or maybe, you know, the baby drops a nap or somebody gets sick for a certain period of time and then your whole plan just gets out of whack. So when that happens, eh, you gotta pull the brakes and everything and start over. So instead of starting over every time that happens, just plan for shorter periods of time. And then what I do is every night, on Sunday nights usually, sometimes Monday mornings, sometimes, I'm trying to do better at that, but Sunday nights, I look at my plan for the, what I had for the week, get everything ready I need for that week, and then we go, and then we're ready to go. And that's helped me save so much brain space and so much time in general uh, when it comes to homeschooling. <laughs> my hack number two is incentives. One word, incentives. <laughs> Some people call them bribes. I call it incentives. <laughs> so this can help. This is just a hack, I guess, for general for homeschool, but it does help with time saving because you might have those children who will drag out their lessons and just not want to do it in the amount of time that you would want it to be done in. So maybe some of you are a little bit slower moms and you're like, oh, it's okay, let's just take the whole day to do this one lesson. I'm not that kind of mom, I wanna just get it done. Get in, get out, get it done. <laughs> so maybe you have a child who is slow like that. Give them an incentive. And you can change this incentive up a little bit throughout the time, or it can be the same every time. One I know that works well in our house is screen time, whether that be watching a show or playing a video game. Um, so I say once your school is done or once X, Y, or Z is done, then you can play and watch your show. That helps a lot. Sometimes chocolate chips help. If you get 10 problems done, I'll give you chocolate chips, 10 chocolate chips. They're small ones, mini chocolate chips. <laughs> so incentives has helped a lot in time management. So it gets my kids, it keeps them moving a little bit quicker. So I think, you know, we do the same for us as moms. We give ourselves, you know, incentives. So it's okay for our kids sometimes. Wake me up before you go, go. to leave me hanging out like a yo-yo. Wake me up before you go, go. That's just, I was just listening to that song, but my time-saving hack number three is to wake up before the kids. I said it, I said it. I know for some people this doesn't work, but for a lot of us, this can work. This can work. Even if it's like 10 or 15 minutes before the kids, it doesn't have to be you know, mom makes, wakes up at 4 a.m. and the, she opens the windows and the curtains are blowing and the sun is shining and the birds are singing. She's holding her coffee and she's sipping it warmly all by herself. And then the worship music is playing in the background and she has a generous one hour time in the word alone with God. And then she puts on her exercise pants and then she goes for a leisurely jog through the woods for another half hour. And then she comes back and takes a really long shower, smell of flowers, her hair go going down her golden hair. Now it's 6 a.m. and now she can eat her breakfast all by herself. And then she gets to plan and she has a whole hour to plan, plan for her homeschool day. And then it's 7 a.m. Little children's eyes open up and they smile and they come out running and say, good morning, mommy, we're ready to start our day. And she says, good morning, children, I'm so glad you were here. How did you sleep, my little buds? Okay, I know that's not reality and I know that. So I have found, even if it's 10 to 15 minutes and you open your eyes first, you get awake, you get yourself your hot drink or whatever it is, you have a few minutes to just stop and think, wake up, drink some water, look at your plan for the day, spend some time in the word if you can in those 10 minutes, maybe you can't, I don't know. And then they come out and then you're a little bit more ready. So it's it helped me, I did this and now I have about an hour, sometimes more, it depends on how early I get up, but I have at least an hour before my kids get up. And I know some of you have kids that wake up early in the morning. That's why I'm saying 10, 15 minutes. If your kids are a little bit older and they sleep in a little more like mine do, then you can you can get up at 6.30 and it's not unreasonable and you're still up an hour before the kids. I started with 10 to 15 minutes before the kids, set my alarm a little bit earlier. Okay, it's a time-saving hack because you are just mentally ready and usually you have your game face on, 
you've had your time in the word and prayer um, and you're ready to go with the kids. As soon as they wake up, you're ready. You know what's coming and you can be fully present with them for the rest of the day. And that is why I say wake up before your kids. So don't throw tomatoes at me if you're not doing that. I'm not judging anyone who doesn't wake up before their kids. I can name some of my friends probably watching this video, but it's all right. It's okay if you don't wake up before your kids. One of those things that helps me with my mornings was uh, Hello Mornings. That's what it's called. Hello Mornings by Kat Lee was really, really good. That was a nice, like, she, she says three things. You start with a three minute morning routine. You know, it's drink of water, read a Bible verse, and look at your plan for the day. And that like really like helped. So you just start with three minutes and then eventually you can move it into an hour morning routine. But that morning routine for you as a mom is so important to just get yourself in the game and ready for the day um, to be present with your kids. So you're not just waking up with them and rushing around and being like, okay, where's the clothes? Okay, where's the books? Okay, where's my coffee? You know, all those things. So, so yes, try waking up before the kids. Okay, if you like this video, I have a series that I did. It was one of my first videos I did back when I started YouTube. I really, really like them. I think they're good. Um, it's the series for the easily distracted homeschool mom. So maybe you're like me and you struggle with the time management thing. I have a few more tips for that. So you wanna check out those videos next after this. Don't forget the playlist as well with Wendy and all the other wonderful homeschool mamas in the link in the description below. Go find his joy among the noise. I'll see you guys next time. once x y or d z and they wait one thing i really think is cool. anyway i'm rambling now <laughs> wake me up before you go go to leave me hanging out like a yo-yo wake me up before you go go take me dancing tonight i want to hit that high 